Diego Aria is a former permanent representative of Venezuela to the United Nations. He joins me from New York. Diego, welcome. I'd like to begin by asking you, um, t a top economist with the International Monetary Fund says um, th there could be total economic collapse in Venezuela in 12 to 18 months. Your reaction, sir? You know, it is in inexplicable how the country that has the largest oil reserves in the world, that has gold, that has steel, have all kinds of natural resources, would find itself at the brink of collapse with an economy uh, contracting in 8%. And the uh, International Monetary Fund might say also it might be above 1,000%. 1, 1, but it is uh, the accumulation of 17 years of the imposing of a model, economic and social and political model, that runs counter to anything that has to do with democracy, with freedom, with prosperity or, or well-being. So now we find ourselves in a very explosive situation. The summary that you presented before me is very clear. So power outages, shortened work week, food shortages, soaring inflation. Can you give us a sense of how ordinary people in Venezuela are getting by? What is life like for them? You know, and you have to add to that, that we have about 20 to 25,000 people killed violently every year, which makes Venezuela the highest crime uh, place in the whole of the region, one of the highest in the whole world. Venezuela, uh, imagine the... A, a, a university professor, uh, in dollar terms, uh, the salary is about 30 to 40 dollars in the wealthiest country in Latin America. So how to find the scarcity of food reaches almost 70 percent. And even worse, the scarcity of medicines is 65 to 70 percent. And actually, it's a humanitarian collapse, a humanitarian crisis. And on top of that, Venezuela owes about $200 billion, among them more than $50 billion to China, who has been the biggest lender uh, to Venezuela. I have to ask you about President Maduro's uh, political future. Uh, the opposition blames him for much of the country's economic crisis. Um, they've been calling for a referendum. Do they have a good chance of uh, pushing Maduro out of office with this referendum? Well, 70 to 80 percent of the polls said that uh, they reject and actually condemn Maduro. Maduro, uh, Maduro has inherited the Chavez terrible uh, legacy of uh, uh, corruption, giving away money. So actually, Maduro is, uh, is actually the, mo the, the, the most unpopular leader of the region. And in Venezuela, to have 80 or 85 percent rejecting him would be more than enough to revoke him. It is a sort of an impeachment. I believe that uh, Venezuela cannot wait another year, and uh, something will have to be done. We're trying to get uh, a, a revoke process. But now Maduro yesterday said to his people, if the opposition, he calls the opposition oligarchy, you know, imagine 50 million oligarchs that are voting against him, said if they, in one way or another, uh, uh, succeed in removing me, uh, I will go to the streets, you must go on an indefinite strike, on until we defeat the oligarchies. And he called on the army and said that the armed forces should be together with the, with the people and the workers to sustain this revolution, which, of course, have failed in a miserable way. Can you see that happening? Can you see uh, a general strike when his popularity is so dismal? Would the armed forces actually listen to him? Well, you know, no, he was saying a, a, a general strike if he's out of the government. Uh, and, of course, that would not amount to much, but he has very few followers. The problem is the armed groups in Venezuela are extremely dangerous. And actually, to be very uh, candid about it, Maduro is under the control of the military, of the Minister, the minister of Defense. And at the same time, the Minister of Defense is coached and helped and mentored by the Cuban government. It is an unusual and very special case which have, the world has never seen before. Um, and finally, I have to ask you, Diego, what is the solution here? Well, the solution should be, actually, if Maduro had uh, some sense, he should resign, and then uh, there will be general elections. The, 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 the level of rejection for him is so high that will be the best that would happen to the country. I doubt that he will do that. But we, as I said, as I said before, we are in a, such an explosive situation that you cannot uh, exclude any way out. I hope they will be institutional. 
explosive situation and clearly a country very much in crisis. Diego, Aria, thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you, Zim.